Okay, so how do we actually do this? How do we actually find the volume of a solid um, with these cross sections? So what I want you to look at is um, these are the area formulas here for common cross sections. So remember, we're taking a flat two-dimensional um, shape that we drew, and we're putting uh, we're putting these cross sections on top of it. So we're putting squares or rectangles or semicircles or triangles on top of it or equilateral triangles. So what I want you to look at is I have this right here. So this is a triangle. So this is a triangle, a two-dimensional triangle. And what we did is we put uh, squares on top of this triangle. And so as you see, as I rotate this so that the tri that triangle is facing flat, like this, it's facing flat down, um, you can see that here's a square. So here's a square, and that square has a length um, that goes from one side of the function to the other. And then here's another square, and here's another square, and here's another square. And you can see that if I found the volume of each of those squares and added them together, I would get the volume of the entire um, three-dimensional shape. And so how would I find the volume of each of those, um, you know, square prisms? Well, I would find the area of the base of that prism times the height or the width of that prism, okay? So um, what we're going to do is we're going to do that with integrals because the idea is that now we're going to make this width in between each square infinitely small and we're going to add all of them together. And that's what an integral is, right? It's making, like the Riemann sums, it's making them infinitely tiny and then adding them all together. So we're going to take the area of our cross section, which is the area of the square, and then we're going to multiply it by the width or the height of that square, which is dx, because that's the change in x. And then we're going to add it for the whole integral. Okay, so it's okay if this is not totally clicking. And what I've said in calculus before is that sometimes um, we have to memorize the formula, use the formula, and as we're using it, it will click. So it's totally fine if you just have to memorize this and say like, okay, I don't quite picture it 100%, but... I'm just going to memorize the formula, but I'm trying to give you an idea of where it's coming from. So our very first example is going to be a triangle. It's not quite this triangle, but we can imagine here's a triangle, and we're going to go ahead and set um, squares on top of this triangle and then find the volume, okay? So when our cross-sections are perpendicular to the x-axis, in other words, when I'm setting my square up and it goes from here to here, right? And then if you can imagine, it, it extends up. And I will tell you there's a reason why I don't teach geometry because I cannot draw this stuff. Like, I am so bad. So that's the best 3D um, square I've got in me. But if you can imagine that that's like a 3D square, um, here, it's sitting on here, that's the length of the base, and then um, it's sitting on top of this um, triangle, and then we have another square you know, right here, and that is sitting on top of the triangle, and they're just stacked on top, okay? So that means that the base of this square is perpendicular to the x-axis, okay? In other words, um, this square sits on the two-dimensional shape like this, okay, rather than like this, okay? So do you see the purple one would be perpendicular to the x-axis, so we're looking at um, the square that's perpendicular to the x-axis. Then the way that we find the volume of this solid is we find the area of the square, the area of the cross-section, um, and then we integrate it from A to B. So A would be the smallest x value that we're going to use, and B is going to be the largest x value that we have. Okay, not too bad, right? Yeah, it's not too bad. So um, if 
they are perpendicular to the y-axis, like this, if we're setting the square or the semicircle or whatever onto it like that, then we're just going to integrate um, with respect to y, and we're going to go from a to b, like from a down here to b up here. Okay? So let's just jump right in and see if we can do one of these. So here we have the volume, we want to find the volume of the solid that has a base of a tr the triangle on the right, and then the um, it's bound by, they gave us the line and then the two axes. And the cross sections are squares, which are perpendicular to the x-axis. So I am putting a square onto this like this. And I'm putting infinitely num many squares. So I'm putting lots and lots of tiny um, width squares on that. So just imagine, because you saw my 3D drawing, imagine that those squares are just like lifting up off of the page. And now we have this shape that looks something like this here, okay? Just So, the way we're going to find the volume of this solid is we're going to find the area of the square, and we're going to integrate that from A to B. So, the very first thing we're going to do is figure out how do we find the area of a square. Well, um, if we remember, we can look up here. If we need to, the area of a square is side squared, right? And so we have to decide what is the length of our side of these squares, okay? So I want you to look at this and decide what is the length of this side of the square? Well, it's whatever the value is of the function here minus zero, right? And what's the length of this square? Well, it's whatever the value is here minus zero. What's the length of this square? Can you, do you see a pattern? So the length of each of these squares is going to be whatever the value of the function is minus zero, which is our bound. So if we want to figure out what the side is, the, the length of the side is going to be our function, negative 2x plus 2 minus zero, because zero is the bottom, right? And so in this case, because it's zero, we don't even have to write it. So our side equals negative 2x plus 2. So if we're going to integrate, we're going to find the volume of the area of our cross section, which is negative 2x plus 2 squared, side squared, right? That's the area of those squares. And then we're going to integrate from the left bound to the right bound, okay? Because we're um, per perpendicular to the x-axis, so we're going uh, left to right. So what's the lowest left value we get? Well, that's zero, and the highest left value, we, or the highest x value we get is one, because that's where these cross. So our limits of integration, which they already wrote for us, but I wanted to tell you where we got them from, is zero to one, and then we have dx, right, because that's the width of these. Okay, so then we just go ahead and integrate this to find the actual area of this, or the volume of this solid. So we're going to define u. We're going to define u, it just um, went way over there, okay, u equals negative 2x plus 2, so du equals negative 2 uh, dx, so dx equals du over negative 2, so we can go ahead and do a u substitution here, so we have uh, the integral of u squared du over negative 2, and then because we did a u substitution and this is a definite integral, let's just go ahead and put change our limits of integration so we don't have to put back in our function. So we're going, originally, when x equals, we're going from when x equals 0 to x equals 1, right? So when x equals 0, what does u equal, okay? So when x equals 0, we have negative 2 times 0 plus 2. So when x equals 0, u equals 2. So our lower limit of integration is 2. And then when x equals 1, what does u equal? Well, when x equals 1, we get negative 2 plus 2, which is 0. So our upper integration is, limit of integration is 0. Okay? So now we're going to go ahead and integrate. So that's u cubed over 3 times negative 1 half, because that's negative 2 right here 
really, um, I really should have written that a little more explicitly for you. Negative one half times the integral from two to zero of u squared du. Because remember that negative one half is a constant, so we can bring it out. Um, and then we evaluate this from two to zero. So we have u cubed, negative u cubed over three evaluated from two to zero. So we evaluated at zero and that equals zero. And then we evaluated it at two and that equals negative eight thirds. So we subtract negative eight thirds, I mean negative eight sixths, that should be a six. I'm sure you caught that and you were just screaming at your screen at me. Mrs. Barney, not right. Actually, I don't know if you caught that because you might not have been able to see it was behind my head. Okay, is that better? So we evaluated at zero. At zero, we evaluated it at, uh, at two. Sorry. Yes, we evaluated zero. At zero. When we evaluated at two, it's negative eight sixths, which is four thirds. So the volume of this solid is going to be four thirds. All right. Now we're going to just set them up. We're not even going to integrate them. Okay. So we're going to set this one up. Uh, semicircles perpendicular to the x-axis, so it has the same base, okay, so we're still using this triangle, and it has the same base. We're also going to still be putting them perpendicular to the x-axis, which means we're still going to be doing them this way, okay, but now instead of those being squares that come up, those are going to be uh, semicircles. So if you can imagine here, like that, that's our new shape-ish. Um, if you can just pretend like that half isn't there because we're just looking at a right triangle, not a multilateral triangle. Okay, so this is kind of the shape that we're actually trying to find the volume of. And so we look and we say, okay, so the, the integral would be um, the integral from 0 to 1, because that's still our left bound and our right bound, of the area of the um, cross sections. So what is the area of a semicircle? Well, the area of a semicircle is 1 half pi r squared. Okay, so 1 half pi r squared. Um, 1 half pi r squared dx. But we have a problem. We have a variable r and not a variable x, right? And we can't integrate r with respect to x. We need to integrate with respect to x. So we need to figure out what that r is in terms of x. So we think about um, the radius of that is going to be, um, if you think about these, these semicircles, um, this is the diameter of the semicircle. So the radius is going to be half of that, right? And we figured out that the length of this is negative 2x plus 2, right? So half of that is going to be the, um, the half of that is going to be the radius. So radius equals one half times negative two x plus two. So our radius equals negative x plus one. Okay, so we're going to do the integral of one half pi, we can pull that outside because those are both constants, times negative x plus one squared dx. Now it's in terms of x, so we can go ahead and integrate. Oh, just kidding, we don't even have to integrate. Remember, we're just setting it up. Okay, so that's what the volume equals. 